Hello? Anybody here? We're coming aboard. Coming aboard? What would you say? Not that. Joey, I'd like to talk to you. What's going on? That's all for now. Yeah. There she is. The latest Blackwell dame I'm shackled to. Took her a while, but she's gotten used to having me around. Get over here, I got something to say. Yeah. All right, let's- Sure. Yeah, that stopped being funny a long time ago. It says... Ryan and June? Guess it's some couple. Creepy. Just our kind of place. Anybody here? Hmm. Anything? Nothing yet? What the heck was that? We're moving. Yeah, I noticed. There's nobody on board but us. Yeah, I noticed that too. So we've definitely got a ghost. Yeah, we do. All right, who's there? Somebody's piloting this tub and it's not me. I knew it. Not without dinner and a show first. That suit should have been abandoned 20 pounds ago. Hey chum, how's Trix? What? what? How did you get here? I just wanna... Get off my boat! Get off or I'll shoot you dead! <laughs> right. Look, why don't you put that toy down and... Ow! What the hell? That hurt! Get off! Listen. Whoa! Hey, alright, I'm going. Joey, what was that noise? Are you okay? I'm fine. Yeah. Looks like we got a spook after all. And he's packing heat. You mean he's got a gun? Were you shot? Yeah. Sorta. Sorta? What happened? Does it hurt? It stings a lot, yeah. But it's going away now. I've moved it as far as it'll go. Got it. Fits perfectly. Hey, what the hell are you doing here? Talk fast. Whoa, relax. I'm just here to talk. Talk? Talk is cheap, and so is life. Hey, wait, no! Huh? I shot you. How are you still standing? I'm so glad that worked. My name's off. It's gotta be the stress. Who are you? 
I'm, uh... I'm a friend. I want to help you. Help me? Did someone from the bank send you? Bank? What bank? What bank? You don't know? I'm afraid not. You're serious? You don't even know who I am, do you? So, what do I do with you? You don't look like a cop, and you're not with the bank. That only leaves... Oh, I get it. You're a stowaway, aren't you? Boy, did you choose the wrong boat. Look, I have no time to deal with this right now. I'm not going to shoot you again. Just go below and stay out of my way. There's not much I can do with it. The controls are all internal. Looks like a satellite navigation system. It reads our position from a satellite. The map on the screen says we're still on the Hudson River. It's a strange looking diagram. Excuse me. What do you want? I'm busy. Is your name Ryan by any chance? What's it to you? Oh, nothing. Just making conversation. I'm Rosangela, by the way. Great! Now leave. So, tell me about June. What do you know about her? Nothing. I just saw the engraving on the side of the ship. Just get out of here, okay? So, tell me about June. What do you know about her? Nothing. I just... Just get out of here. What made you think I came from a bank? Nothing. Nothing. No, no reason. Just, just get, get out, out of here. here. Well, talk to you later. Mm -hmm. just, just stay, stay out, out of my way. way. There's something funny about this wall. Holy moolah! Will you look at that? There's gotta be over a million dollars in there. I know it's tempting, kid, but I say leave that alone. Nobody ever leaves that kind of dough just lying around. Nobody we want to meet anyway. Don't worry, Joey. I'm not stupid. It's just... Wow. I've never seen so much money. I know, dear. I know. You can look, but don't touch. Stacks of hundred dollar bills. There must be over a hundred of them. Hmm. That's interesting. Each stack has the same wrapper around them. And they all have the same letters printed on them. GCT. What's that? Sounds like a clue to where the money came from. The money wrappers had the letters GCT printed on them. Hmm, GCT could stand for a bank's name. Easy enough to find out. Time for a little cross-referencing. Thought so. There are a lot of GCTs out there, but only the Grant City Trust seems to be a bank.
Excuse me. What, what do, you do you want? want? I'm, I'm busy. busy. I know about the Grant City Trust. What, what about, about them? them? I know you robbed them. Yeah, yeah, well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you know. They can't, can't catch, catch me now. now. You used to work for them, didn't you? You bet I did. Thirty years of service, and they were going to lay me off without a second thought. Well, I certainly showed them. I just gotta get to Boston. Once I get there, I'm free and clear. I know about the- What about- I know you robbed- Yeah, yeah. well- You used to work- You bet I did. Thirty- Well, I, I just gotta get to- Boston? What's in Boston? I have a cousin with a private plane. That's what. Once I get to Boston, I'm going to dump this yacht and take a one-way trip to anywhere. So you're not stopping until we get to Boston? Not a chance. So make yourself comfortable. So, how far are we from Boston now? Well, let's see. According to my satellite navigation system, we are... Still in New York. We have a while to go yet. Good thing nobody is following us. Ah, right. Looks like I'm screwing with airborne signals again. Whatever this thing is, it's flickering like mad. Excuse me. What, what do, you do you want? want? I'm, I'm busy. busy. So, how far are we from Boston now? Well, let's see. According to my satellite navigation system, we are... The Gulf of Mexico. I know we can't be that far off course. Something must be interfering with the navigation system. It'll fix itself in a minute. Excuse me. What do you want? I'm busy. So, how far are we from Boston now? Well, let's see. According to my satellite navigation system, we are... <laughs> Look at that. According to this, we are a mile outside of Boston Harbor. I feel like I've been piloting this boat near forever. I've got to go on deck and take a look. What a beautiful sight this is going to be. Ryan. That's the George Washington Bridge. That's right. This isn't Boston. No, it's not. How is this possible? How can I still be in New York? I've been piloting this boat for I don't know how long. I must have left New York waters by now. How long, Ryan? What? Just how long have you been piloting this boat? I don't know. I grabbed the money a few hours after closing time. That must have been 9 p.m.? I came straight to the boat, so it's only been a few hours, right? I hid the money down below. I set out, and then I heard sirens. The harbor police on the bullhorn. They boarded. No, no, they didn't get me. They couldn't have. I was so desperate to get away. I had my gun. I missed. They shot back. That's all I remember. They did get me. I'm sorry, Ryan. For 30 years, they made me bleed, and they finally killed me once and for all. Excuse me, this is a lot to take in. Hey, Ryan. I'm gonna have to ask you to take this. What is it? It's to help you on your way. My... way? Yes, Ryan. It's time for you to move on. <sighs> yes, I guess it's time.
I think... I think I went a bit mad. It's all so clear to me now. My wife died. Did I tell you about that? Her name was June. Yes, cancer. And it wasn't pretty. But when she died, I kind of lost it. My work suffered quite a bit. Maybe they had no choice but to fire me, but I thought that 30 years of service was worth something. I guess I was wrong. Strange. Why is this all so obvious to me now that I'm dead? I wish I knew. Still, the bank will never get their money back. I made sure they paid for that, at least. You know you can't take it with you, right? No, I know exactly what I mean. Then what are you talking about? You'll find out. June, if you're out there, I'm coming. Say, darling, you wouldn't know how to pilot this floating crate, would you? No. Why? Because we've increased speed by, uh, a lot, and we're headed straight towards the Jersey Shore. What? Is that what he meant? What who meant? Never mind. All these buttons are Greek to me. What do we do? Can you swim? Hey, careful. Oh, God. Oh, God. You ready? No. Jump! Ah! I can't take you anywhere. Shut up. I'm wet, I'm filthy, and I'm in New Jersey. Relax, will ya? We saved another one. Score another point for us. Yeah. That yacht is completely totaled. The two million bucks as well. We are so not getting paid. Not one lead cent. <sighs> City dock wall. Fortunately, nobody was injured. Who'd be calling me now? Joey, could you, uh. Right, right. Hello? Hi, is this Rosangela? Yes, who's this? It's been a while. This is Jeremy Sams. Jeremy? Oh, Jeremy, yeah. Are you still at the Village Eye? Oh, God, no. I left there a year ago. I work at the City Post now. Really? That's a big step up. Congratulations. Thanks. I actually hoped you could help me with an article I'm working on. Me? I've come down with the flu or something really bad. I need to follow up on some interviews and the window is closing. Can you help? Come on. You'll be paid and you can share the byline. Well, tell me what it is first. Awesome. Come on over and we'll chat. Thanks a mail, Rosangela. So we're moonlighting as reporters now? I used to work with Jeremy. He's okay. And the extra money won't hurt. The City Post is a pretty important paper. Maybe they'll want a spiritual news column. I doubt it. Relax. Just some old articles, bills, and reminders. Nothing important. It's fine where it is. 
The article is titled, The Rise and Fall of the Meltzer Foundation. I didn't write it, but I did kind of make it happen. It's the last article I ever wrote for the Village Eye newspaper. It was about three college kids who committed suicide. It's a poster for a movie called Water Under the Bridge. It's open. Come on in. I'll be out in a sec. Is this how high-rolling reporters live nowadays? Hmm? Sorry, Sorry about, about that. that. I haven't I been feeling well, as I said. said. Who's your friend? friend? Is something wrong? Jeremy, what happened to you? Happened? happened? Nothing, Nothing happened. happened. I got I sick. sick. I just, just caught a nasty bug or something. something. Horrible, Horrible timing. timing. I'm, I'm on the verge of something, something really big. big. That's, That's why, why I need your help. help. You need our help, all right. Sorry, Sorry but, but who are you? you? I'm with her. This is Joey. He's kind of my... partner. I see. So you two are... Oh, no, uh, nothing like that. I mean, a writing partner. Oh, good. I mean, that's good. Partners are good. Well, it's nice to meet you, Joey. I like the hat. Anyway, how about we get down to business? Are you sure there's nothing else wrong with you? It's just the flu. Nothing to worry about. I'll be fine in a few days. I just want to get this article submitted before it's too late. All right, Jeremy, tell me about this article of yours. Brilliant. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Do you know where the City Post news office is? I think so. This flu is making it hard to remember everything, but I kept pretty good notes. Just go up there and tell them I sent you. My notebook is on my desk. I go myself, but I'm not exactly up to snuff. Snuff is the word. Joey! What? So what do you say? Will you help me? Yes, of course I'll help. It's what I do. So, Jeremy, tell me about yourself. We never got much of a chance to talk back then. Me? Um, I was born upstate, moved here after college, wrote freelance for a bunch of papers, including the Village Eye. Not much else to tell, really. Well, I better get going. Thanks. I really appreciate this, Rosangela. Yeah, look, you can call me Rosa. All right. Rosa it is, then. Oh my god. Is that me? I mean, us? Yeah. You remember the 05 Christmas party? Yeah, that was a while ago. I was going through some old pictures when I came across yours. That's why I thought to call you. I see. Not without dinner and a show first. Hey, look. Before you go, I just want to, well, apologize. I know it's a bit weird calling you up and asking you such a big favor like this. Don't worry about it. Well, when I'm over this flu, I'll make it up to you. I promise. No, you don't have to do that, really. Just, just take care of yourself. Well, that was unexpected. Yeah, I suppose. You know where that newspaper office is? Yeah. Then let's hop to it. Hmm? Could I help you? What do you know about Jeremy Sams? 
Jeremy? He works here. His office is just up there on the second floor, but I haven't seen him in a few days. So you don't know where he is now? I have no idea. If you'd like to leave him a message, I'll let him know you stopped by. I was told you'd be expecting me. My name is Rosangela Blackwell. Sorry, I wasn't told anything. Really? I need to go inside and pick up some notes. Sorry, but if you don't have permission to be here, I can't let you in. Do you know anything about Jeremy's death? Huh? Jeremy's death. I'm kind of looking into it. Jeremy's dead? Are you serious? You mean you don't know? Of course not. What happened to him? I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? How did he die? What happened? I don't know. Where is he now? I don't know. Right. This is sick. I think you should get out of here before I call security. That's my girl, making friends wherever she goes. I really do need to see Jeremy's notes. Maybe you could get them for me? No, I can't. Could I ask you a few questions? I don't think so, no. Just leave, please. I'll be going, I guess. Bye. It's the notebook that Jeremy asked us to find. It's closed right now. I can't read what's inside. Looks like a press pass. No reaction. I guess with the door open like that, a breeze is nothing new. Oh no. What do you want me to do, blow in his ear? Excuse me, officer? It's Detective. Detective Durkin. And you shouldn't be up here at this hour. Did something happen here? No, I'm doing street art. Of course something happened. You should run along home. You don't want the same thing to happen to you. Someone died, didn't they? Gee, what tipped you off? Believe me when I say you don't want to be involved. Could you tell me who it was? Couldn't, even if I wanted to, because we don't know. So it's a, uh, what do you call it, a uh, John Doe? Yeah, sure, whatever. I think I know who the victim was. You do, huh? His name was Jeremy Sams. And how do you know this? I just do. You just do. Ish. What is it about Pox that brings out all the crazies? I'm positive the victim is Jeremy. Maybe I can ID the body. You wanna come look at the body? You know how crazy you sound? I do? You come out of nowhere, and say you know a stiff by looking at an outline on pavement? Yeah, sounds crazy. Even if you could ID the guy, it wouldn't hold up. I'm offering information here, why won't you take it? You think you're the only crackpot with a theory? We have procedures. We'll release a photograph, and then get a proper ID. Now run along. I'm offering info- You think you're the only crap? We have procedures. Now run along. Right. I'll be back. It's a free country. Come on in. Oh, hi Rosa. Make yourself at home. Jeremy, could I have this photo? Really? You, you want, want it? it? If it's okay. Sure. 
I've, I've got, got copies, copies somewhere. somewhere. Go right ahead. Thanks. Is this the same man you found? Let me see that. That's him, all right. What did you say his name was? Jeremy Sams. Jeremy Sams. And what's your relation to him? We used to work together. Hmm. You know any of his family? Anyone we can notify or speak to? I know he was a reporter for the City Post. Right. I'll give him a call. And we're gonna have to follow up with you, too. You got a number? Here's my card. Spiritual services, huh? Why do I always end up with the nuts? Anyway, right. Good night. Don't stay up here too long. It ain't safe. Um, you're welcome? Oh, it's you. I just got off the phone with the police. You were right. Jeremy is really dead. I just saw him two days ago. He was always nice to me. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. About before, I was a complete jerk. Why didn't you say it was murder? I wasn't sure at the time. Police seemed pretty sure. You said you were investigating his death? Yes. I wanted to take a look at his desk. Right. I'll buzz you in. The place is empty. I'm just here holding the phones. Take as much time as you need. Just find whoever did this, okay? I'll do my best. I can't get through that door from down here. Alright, Jeremy. What were you up to? Let's see if it was worth getting killed over. According to this, Jeremy interviewed a woman named Penelope Haynes. Looks like Jeremy tried to speak to someone named Penelope Haynes over the phone. Looks like Jeremy tried to speak to someone named Penelope Haynes over the phone. A definite connection. Connection to what? It says that Jeremy followed up with someone, and whoever it was tried to scam him. It says that Jeremy followed up with someone, and whoever it was tried to scam him. Jeremy lost his phone somewhere. I wonder if anyone found it. Come on in! Oh! Hi, Rosa. Make yourself at home. Jeremy? Yes? I got your notebook. You are a rock star. Here you go. Take it. Right. On second thought, could you read it out to me? This flu is making me a bit fuzzy. I'm having trouble focusing my eyes. Are you sure? Yes. Please. Sure, Jeremy. Thank you. So, when did you leave the village eye? A little after you. Most of us did. Really? Our boss was a slime ball, and when you left, we all followed your example. I had no idea.
You wrote about someone named Penelope Haynes. Penelope Haynes, yeah. She's an interesting case. She's a victim, but doesn't believe she's a victim at all. She embraces it. I wish it was uncommon, but unfortunately it's not. What do you mean? God, my head. It's like thinking through a straw. Penelope, she's the weak link. She's a talker. Most people don't like to talk about this kind of thing, but she does. Talk about what? It's hard to explain. Why don't you try us? No. I'm just really sick, okay? I can't think straight. Of course, you're sick. I understand. Thank you. But I do need more to go on. Speak to Penelope. She lives up on Park Avenue. She's a bit old, so be patient with her. You wrote in your notes that you lost your phone. Did I? Yes, you did. If I did, I must have found it. I've got it right here. See? Did you hear about the murder on the High Line? The... the what? Somebody was killed at the High Line Park, very recently. That's interesting news. But hey, somebody else is going to have to cover it. I'm really sick and I've already got a story to cover. Is there anything else you can tell me about Penelope Haynes? Have you been up to her apartment on Park Avenue yet? No, not yet. Go pay her a visit. Once you know more, we'll talk again. Well, I better get going. All right. Thanks again, Rosa. Yes? Penelope Haynes? I'm Madison Haynes. Penelope is my mother-in-law. Can I help you? She had a visit from a reporter not too long ago, a Jeremy Sams from the City Post. Oh, you're with them. Come in. <laughs> Sorry, but you're out of luck. She no longer lives here. She's not dead, is she? What? No! What gave you that idea? I... Well, never mind. It was a stupid question. You said it, not me. Where did she go? Where she can be taken care of. She's quite elderly. A nice enough woman, but needed a lot of looking after. As you can see, we just had a child. I couldn't look after both of them. Not if I wanted to keep my sanity. So she's in a nursing home? An assisted living center, yes. Could you tell me what center she's in? I don't think that's a good idea. When your friend from the newspaper came, she became quite agitated. She was always a little unstable, but she became much worse. I don't know what you want with her, but I don't think I should tell you where she is. What did Jeremy speak to Penelope about? You don't know? Aren't you from the paper too? Not exactly. Jeremy is, uh, ill. I'm following up on his interviews, trying to learn what he did. I see. Well, I don't know what they spoke about. He spoke to her privately in her room just over there. That's a cute kid you've got there. Thanks. His name is Chris. He's about eight months old now. He's a little terror, but <laughs> he's mine. Well, thanks for the chat. I might be back to follow up. I don't really have anything else to tell you, but bye. This is what happens when Daddy buys thermostats wholesale. I'm not gonna waste my breath. So, kid, how's it going? Oh, no need to get up. Oh, hey, watch it! <sighs> I 
swear, Chris, you've got a skull tougher than your father's. Still a ghost. Still can't pick that up. It's a brochure. It looks like it's for a nursing home. The place is called Seagram Assisted Living, and it's got a branch down on East 33rd. Some kind of green trinket. I found out where they stashed the old lady. It's a place called Seagram. Did you get the address? Of course I did. Hi. Is this Seagram Assisted Living? You've got the right place. What can I do for you? Could you tell me a bit about this place? Well, if you want my opinion, this is one of the best assisted living centers in New York. But you don't want to hear a PR spiel, I'm sure. If you're interested, take one of our brochures over there. I'm looking for a Penelope Haynes. Does she stay here? Mrs. Haynes? She spends her time in the common area most days. It's on the second floor. You can't miss it. Thanks. Can you tell me anything about Penelope Haynes? Her? Nice lady. Very... I guess you could call her spiritual. She hangs out in the common room most of the time. It's okay if I go visit her? We like to think of our residents as guests, not patients. We take care of them, but this is their home. As long as you don't bother anybody, you can come and go as you please. Thanks for the help. Have a good day. <laughs> there, there. It's only visitors. Does this belong to anybody? Nobody I know. Help yourself. Penelope Haynes? Hmm? Oh, Madison. Well, this is a surprise. No, I'm not Madison. You're not? Ah, oh, yes. Sorry, I should have known. Your aura carries a whiff of her essence. I got confused. You said something about an aura? I could see it a mile away. Your aura, my dear, it's been infected by her. Her? The woman who calls herself my daughter-in-law. Bits of her essence have infected your aura like vile worms. Really? No, not really. Don't fall for this. She smells Madison's perfume. I don't have a nose and I could tell she was swimming in it. Madison is a spiritual viper. I was told Jeremy Sams came to talk to you. Oh, that young man? So keen, so interested. He believed, or he wanted to. He's on his way now, I think. I sent him there. You think Madison is a spiritual viper? The energy. Energy flows into her but doesn't come out. She just cares for material wealth and nothing for her fellow human beings. She's corrupted my son, and it's too late for him. But me? I got out. Lucky escape. Where did you send Jeremy? To the next phase, of course. The next phase? There are many worlds, but we have work to do in this one. I... I'm afraid I don't understand. There, there. You're not supposed to. Do you know Jeremy is dead? What? What are you talking about? Jeremy is dead. He was killed a few days ago. Oh. Oh my. That is funny. Pardon? Me going on about sending him on his way to the next world. What you must think of me. Don't worry about it. I sometimes forget that I operate on a higher plane than most people. Still can't be helped. Don't worry about the boy. He has rejoined the universe. 
What did you and Jeremy speak about? My work, the universe, and my work within the universe. So many people, so many lost. I'm quite important, you know. What kind of work do you do? I meditate. I think. I exist. Really? What more is there? Well, thanks for your time, Mrs. Haynes. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Stop by any time. Hello? Can you hear me? Nothing. I ain't gonna waste my breath. I ain't gonna waste my breath. Girl. Joey. Joey, is that you? Huh? Are you talking to me? Hello? Anybody there? Joey. Yeah, that's my name. Do I know you? Huh. I'm afraid he does that sometimes. Talks to people who aren't there. Or perhaps they are. He sees the world through different eyes. Oh, for crying out loud, shut up. Joey. Why? Why did you do it? Are you? No. Not you. Get the elevator, Red. We're leaving. Joey. You really want to have this conversation here? Get the damn elevator. So were you going to tell me? What? Who was that guy? Maybe nobody. Maybe somebody. I don't know. You don't know? No, I don't. If there's something to say, I'll say it. Until then, we got a spook to sort. Oh, you again. I told you, there is no reason for you to be here. I spoke to your mother-in-law. You spoke to Penelope? Yes. I told you not to speak to her. No, you said you wouldn't tell me where to find her. I found her anyway. Hmm, clever girl. And what did she tell you? She doesn't think much of you, that's for sure. <sighs> Come in, shut the door. Let me tell you something about my mother-in-law. She's rich and she's needy. People like her are easy prey for people like him. People like who? People like Gavin. What did this Gavin do? He brainwashed her is what he did. He made her hate us. He told her we were phony and superficial. Okay, we're well off. I can't deny that. But the thing she said? She changed her will. Can you believe that? Left everything to Gavin. Even my husband couldn't look at her anymore, so we sent her away. Was it a lot of money? Who cares about the money? The money isn't the point. She turned her back on her family, her son, her new grandchild, just because some cult leader told her to. You stick by your family, that's just what you do. So you put Penelope into a nursing home after she changed her will? I know, I know. We're horrible, ungrateful people. Don't think we don't feel guilty about it. But she was impossible to live with, and we have a son to raise. I even gave her a key and I told her she could visit whenever she liked. Not that she would. She denies we ever gave it to her, even though it's lying in her room for everyone to see. Well, I better get going. Goodbye, then. Got it. Mrs. Haynes. Oh, it's you.
I spoke to Madison about you. Oh, I'd advise against that. Five minutes in her presence will kill a year of your spiritual growth. Did you really cut your family out of your will? Sure I did. What of it? They have everything they need. I'm giving it to a much worthy cause. The work must continue. I can make sure it does. Madison doesn't seem all that bad. You never lived with her. For years I lived under a cloud, only I never knew it. The clouds have parted and I see. See what? My purpose. I never had one before. She couldn't see that. She did everything she could to destroy it. She even took my peridot. Peridot? A stone. Gavin gave it to me. It promotes spiritual growth. She took it before sending me here, like it will do her any good. Can't you get another one? This one was given to me by Gavin. It has special energy inside. It's irreplaceable. I could get your peridot for you. You would do that? You'd brave that nest of vipers and retrieve it for me? It's hardly a nest of vipers. That's because you can't see. But if you get it for me, let's just say that helping others is the key to helping yourself. I'd like to help myself to some earplugs. This Gavin, who is he? Gavin is the one who opened my eyes. You make him sound like a prophet. Far from it. He's just a man who had his eyes opened, and he helps others do the same. He was just a signpost on my spiritual journey. More like the exit ramp to your personal loony bin. I'd like to meet Gavin. You? No. No, I don't believe you're sincere. That reporter, Jeremy. I sent him on his way to Gavin and it just upset things. It upset someone, all right. Upset them enough to kill. Perhaps he wasn't ready. Perhaps he remained closed-minded. Perhaps I should have seen that. Either way, you must find your way to Gavin yourself. Unless you can prove your sincerity. Prove my sincerity? How do I do that? Promote your own spiritual growth. If you don't do that, your eyes will remain forever closed. Spiritual growth. I'm the only spirit around here and it's never done me any good. Madison told me she gave you a key to her apartment. A key? No, she didn't. She told me she did. Well, she's lying. She hates me, so she wouldn't give me anything. You understand? I'm not sure I do. That's all right. Maybe you're not supposed to. Well, thanks for your time, Mrs. Haynes. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Stop by any time. What am I supposed to do? Sing to it? A list of docs who are on call. Don't recognize any of them. A list of docs who are on call. Don't recognize any of them. Looks like a cleaning rotation chart. The handwriting is awful, but it looks like Penelope Haynes is due to have her room cleaned today. Room 12G, to be precise. Hmm, let's see if this works. She's got the yarn, she can pull. I can't believe we just did this. When you're saving souls, sometimes you gotta rob a few old ladies.
you again. Hi. Come in. Shut the door. <laughs> what? Penelope mentioned a Peridot stone. Oh, that thing. She wore it constantly, believed it contained some spiritual powers or something. I should throw it away. Can I have the Peridot stone? Why? Penelope would like it back. Absolutely not! That trinket just made the problem worse for her. The next time I think of it, I'm just gonna throw it away. Are you sure I can't take the Peridot off your hands? I think Penelope would really appreciate it. Did you hear what I told you? I said no. Are you sure I can't take the Peridot? I think Penelope would really- Did you hear what I told you? I said no. Well, I better get going. Listen, I appreciate what you're doing, but please don't bother us again. We're embarrassed enough by this as it is. I'll do my best. I expect more than that. If any of this shows up in the paper, we'll deny everything. You got that? Now, Chris and I are meeting my husband for dinner, so if you'll let yourself out. Right, sure. Doesn't look like anyone's home. Got it. I'm saying maybe we should wait until he's older. I know. It's just been so long since we've gone out. We don't have to go to Le Cirque, you know. I know. One day he'll learn how to behave. One day. Look, I'll go make something for us to eat. You let him run around until he gets tired. Then we'll have the evening to ourselves. It's a date. Well, crud. I'll go scope things out. Just hang tight. Hmm. The numbers on this gizmo went down a bit. It now says 62 degrees. Hmm. You know, Chris, I think it's getting a little hot in here. What do you think? Should we open a door? Yeah, I think so too. So, kid, what's the skinny? <sighs> Chris? Where are you going, you little monster? I got your Peridot stone back. Is this it? Yes, that's mine all right. You actually went into that place and took it? Er, uh, yes. Imagine that. I thought you were just humoring me. So, about Gavin? Oh, that's right. You wanted to see him. Well, I'm not sure you are ready, but I can certainly put you on the path. The one you seek is named Lisa Tenzin. Who is Lisa Tenzin? She's a healer. She is the one who introduced me to Gavin. I sent your friend Jeremy to her as well. I see. So where can I find her? Her office is in Midtown. Here's the address. Thanks. Well, thanks for your time, Mrs. Haynes. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Stop by any time.
A street psychic, huh? Keep on your toes. This could get messy. I think I can handle a psychic. I am one after all. Just be careful is all I'm saying. Locked. Hi, is this Lisa Tenzin? That's me. Penelope Haynes gave me your address. I was hoping I could talk to you. Any sent you. Of course, come on in. Please, sit. So, what can I do to help? I'm Rosangela Blackwell. A pleasure. I'm Lisa Tenzin. You said Penny recommended me. Yes, I was hoping to talk to you. I am here to help. What exactly do you do here? I work with life energy mostly. Positive energy keeps your spirit alive and healthy, while negative energy blocks it. And that's important? Think of it like exercise for the soul. Just like maintaining a healthy body, you also need to maintain a healthy spirit. Healthy spirit, right. If I was healthy, I wouldn't be dead, would I? How does it work? Through meditation. That's something I can offer you. Me? Do you think I need it? I can tell that your spirit is weak and could use my services. My spirit is weak? How? Something is blocking it. It can't function and flow like it normally would. What would cause that? In your case, I'd say it was a recent tragedy. Something happened to you recently, didn't it? Something that affected you deeply? My aunt died a few years ago. And you were close? I can tell. She kind of raised me. For a while, anyway. Say no more. Being confronted with death, any death, makes you confront your own mortality. If you aren't careful, it can generate negative energy that damages the spirit. You aren't buying this crap, are you? But if you like, I can help you get better. So how can you help me get better? Your blockage is strong, but not insurmountable. I can meditate tonight on the problem. That way the best course of action will be revealed to me. If I asked you to do this for me, what then? It takes a great deal of spiritual energy to meditate on this kind of problem. I need to light a special candle in order to replenish it. So I will need to charge you $200 for the service. Then we can create an energy work plan. Huh. And you doubted her sincerity. I am going to have to think about this. Of course. There is no hurry. Did a Jeremy Sams come to see you? I wouldn't tell you one way or the other. Like any healer, I believe in confidentiality. Do you know anything about the High Line? I know nothing more than anybody else, I'm sure. Could you tell me why Penelope came to see you? I'm afraid not. Our sessions are private. Could you tell me about Gavin? Penelope said you introduced her to him. Those sessions were supposed to be private. Even still, I would like to meet him. The spiritual process must not be rushed. Penny was ready and needed to take the next step. But you, you will need several months of sessions before you can even begin that journey. Thanks. It is not a judgment. It is what you are. Jeremy is dead. I'm sorry to hear that. A death often brings us in contact with our own mortality. No, it's not that. There's no confidentiality if he's dead, right? There are other worlds than these, Miss Blackwell. Yeah, we know. Thanks for listening, Lisa. I'll get back to you about fixing my... problem. Of course. Have a good night. What did I tell you? A blocked aura. Do I really have a blocked aura? How would I know? For that matter, how would she? Because maybe she's a real psychic. I'm pretty sure they exist. I am living proof. 
I don't know anything about auras, sweetheart, but I know a phony when I see one. And that woman in there? A bona fide phony. So what am I then? Beats the hell out of me. Hm. God, that's disgusting. Is Jeremy's phone really under all that? Only one way to find out. You gonna help or what? Being dead means I don't have to pick through garbage. It's one of the perks. Right. Found it. Jeremy better appreciate this. Locked. Hi, it's me again. Oh, hello. Please, sit. Lisa, I found Jeremy's phone. It was outside, in the trash. It's a public street. So he was here? He might have been outside. I cannot say. I know you spoke to Jeremy, Lisa. Why are you lying to me? Lying? What makes you think that? Jeremy told me. Didn't you tell me he was dead? Whatever he told you, it's not true. I never spoke to anyone named Jeremy. I think this interview is at an end. It's very clear that I will be unable to help you. Your mind is closed off. You aren't seeking help. You only want to destroy. What? No, I, I only want to... Your very presence is damaging the aura of peace I spent years trying to create. I insist that you leave, and I also insist you give up this line of inquiry. Give up? That's not an option. Not for me. Nevertheless. My friend came to see you, and then he was killed. You can either help me, or you can get in my way. But one way or another, I'm gonna find out what happened. I'll be in touch. Smooth exit. Whatever. Let's just get out of here. Come on in! Oh! Hi, Rosa. Make yourself at home. We've met Penelope. Oh, you found her? How's she doing? She's... interesting. Interesting's the word. I could only understand half of that crap she spouted. Yeah, she's a bit out there. She thinks she's found something meaningful. Has she? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. I met Lisa Tenzin. Lisa? That's right! Lisa! I almost forgot all about her. I only just met her. I met her through Penelope, like you. Crazy, isn't it? Who knew how big this was? That's, That's why, why we, need we need to break, break it wide open, open, you see? I... don't... know. Come on, Rosa, you see them on every street corner. These phony psychics, these rip-off artists. They say they can see auras, or even talk to the dead. Imagine that. But it's all a lie, everyone knows that. Or do we? Why do people keep going to these places? There's something beyond this. Something incredible. I'm so close. Jeremy, I've got something to show you, but before I do, could I see your phone? What, this? Yes. Now take a look here. I don't get it. You've got the same phone as me? No, Jeremy. It's your phone. No, it's not. I've got mine right here. I called you, remember? I don't know how you did that, but that's not your phone. This is. You lost it outside of Lisa's. It was in the trash can. That's impossible. I called it. It rang. It's yours. I... no. No, this... this is a trick. Jeremy... No! Just when I'm getting close, you're trying to... confuse me. You're trying to make me forget. Forget... my appointment. Appointment? Yes, at the High Line. I'm meeting with someone who will explain everything. I'm going. Don't try and stop me.
Jeremy? I was here. This is me. I was standing right there. Then I heard a pop. And then, then I was calling you with a phone that couldn't exist. Somehow, I just knew you were the one who could help me. Like I said, it's what we do. Could you tell us who you were meeting here? I was meeting a man named Gavin. Lisa arranged it. I've heard stories. People change around him. They destroy their lives, sometimes even die. Die like I died. Jeremy, I'm so sorry. No, no, it's okay. I don't know why, but I feel good. Relieved, even. You'll find him, won't you? You can take over? We'll find him, Jeremy. This won't happen to anybody else. Thank you. I'm ready. Jeremy, it's time. This is incredible. All this time, I never imagined. This is your life now. This is my life now. Not quite the village I, is it? Beats writing book reviews. Um, so I guess I should just... Yeah, the light. Just go through it? Just go through it. Well, he's gone. You okay? Sure. Nothing an entire bottle of wine won't fix. Well, you know what they say. Bacchus knows best. 